Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. Parashat Terumah Summary Hashem gave B'nai Yisrael a commandment to build a resting place for the Shekhinah, known as the Mishkan. Some hold this mitzvah was given before the sin of the golden calf, and some hold it was done afterwards. The following 16 materials were needed and donated for the Mishkan. The metals included gold, silver, and copper. The materials included red wool, blue wool, purple wool, red ram skins, goat's hair, tachash, which was a multicolored animal skins, and linen. The stones included the stones for the choshen, the breastplate, Stones for the shoulders of the ephod. And some miscellaneous objects included oil, spices for the ketoret, spices for the anointing oil known as the shemen hamishcha, and the wood. Mishkan had three sections. Kodesh Kodashim was the first, the innermost, holiest section. This housed the Arona Kodesh. Here the Kohen Gadol was only allowed to enter on Yom Kippur. Outside of that was the Kodesh or the Hechal. In the Kodesh were the Shulchan, the Menorah, and the Mizbeach HaZahav, the Golden Altar. Lastly, the outer courtyard, known as the Chatser, or the Azara. There we have the Kior, the basin, where the Kohanim washed their hands and feet, and the Mizbeach, where the Korbanot were brought. That was all in the courtyard. The Aron was made from three boxes, one inside the other. The innermost and outermost were made from gold. The middle box was made from wood. Around the outer box was a zer zahav, a golden rim. The cover, kaporet, was made from gold. Hammered out from the same block of gold were two keruvim, forms of winged children. The luchot, a jar of man, and Aaron's staff were kept inside the aron. The shulchan was made from wood covered with gold. Around its upper edge was a zer zahav, a golden rim. On the shulchan were twelve loaves of bread, lechem hapanim, which were shaped like thick square matzot and turned up ends. Every Shabbat, the kohanim would take off the old loaves and put on the new ones. A miracle happened and the bread was perfectly fresh and warm even a week later. Two spoons filled with levona, a spice, were on the shulchan. Before the lechem hapanim was eaten, the kohanim would burn the levona. The menorah had six branches and one middle stem, called the Ner Ma'arabi. Altogether, there were seven lamps, which were lit daily in the evening. Each branch had three types of ornaments, the Gevi'im, the Kaftorim, and the Frachim, the cups, the knobs, and the flowers. The menorah was made out of a solid block of gold, and there were three steps in front of it. The roof of the Mishkan was made of three layers, some say four. The top layer was made from tacha skins and ram skins dyed red. The middle layer was made from goat's hair, and the bottom layer was made from ten tapestry, tapestries. Thread, which was made from bluish wool, purple wool, red wool, linen, and gold, was used to make these tapestries. Woven into, the, in, into it were figures of lions and eagles. The walls of the Mishkan were built from ten ama tall beams of shittim wood. The bottom of each beam was inserted into two adanim, silver sockets. Two gold-covered poles went through rings on the outside of Mishkan. Another pole, the Beria Chatichon, went through the middle of each beam. Mishkan was 30 amot long and 10 amot wide. At the entrance of the Mishkan hung a curtain called the Masach. At the entrance of the Kodesh Kodashim hung a curtain called the Parochet. The Mizbeach HaNechoshet, the copper Mizbeach, was used for the korbanot and was in the chaser. It was made from wood covered with copper, was hollow inside, and was filled with earth. This mizbeach was also called mizbeach hachitzon, the outer mizbeach, <coughs> or mizbeach haola, and mizbeach adama. On each corner there was a keren, a horn, onto which the kohanim would place the blood of certain korbanot. There was a ramp leading up to the mizbeach as steps were not allowed. The Aron, Shulchan, and Mizbeach had badim, poles that were used to carry it. It is forbidden to remove the poles of the Aron. The Chatser, the 
courtyard around the Mishkan was surrounded by kelaim, curtains which were hung from hooks on amudim, pillars that were placed around the courtyard. These pillars were five amot tall. The chaser was 100 amot long and 50 amot wide. Nowadays, we don't have the Mishkan or Bet HaMikdash. Instead, we have our synagogues and Batei Midrash. We must treat them with proper respect and kavod, because they are the places where the Shekhinah rests today.